evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. If you've been seated in front of a TV all day watching the unfolding pageant, and obviously we're hoping that you were because it's our business, you know that Michael Flynn was supposed to be sentenced today. That would be for the crime of lying to FBI agents in his now famous White House interview at the very beginning of the administration. For a number of reasons you probably already heard about, none of them very significant in the cosmic scheme of things, that sentencing has been postponed until the new year. And of course, we'll bring you the details when that happens. In the meantime, though, we thought we would seize this opportunity to take stock of all that we have learned. Michael Flynn being, of course, the first major target of the Mueller investigation. That was all the way back, if you can believe it, at the beginning of last year, 2017. So it's been just about two years, almost, and the hunt for Russian spies on our soil has not slowed down. It has metastasized into something vast and remarkable. It's now practically its own agency of government. There now, we think this is right, there could be more, but what we could find are a half a dozen separate Russia investigations now being conducted by the Justice Department. That does not even count the separate congressional inquiries, so four, five, maybe more, who knows. And then, of course, nearly 100% of the attention of every news organization in Washington, almost everyone. So what have we learned after all that time and all that money and all that attention? Well, we know that the Russians spent a total of Let's check the math. $4,700 on Google ads during the 2016 election. Try to buy a car for that. We also know that Jerome Corsi and George Papadopoulos, two people you probably had never heard of before, likely did something bad, like misremembering dates or emails, though apparently neither one of them spied for anybody. That's what we've learned. We've also learned that, and people are not noting this, but we thought it'd be worth pointing out, Virtually every issue that led voters unexpectedly to support Donald Trump in 2016 remains, as of now, unresolved, in some cases not even addressed. That would include the decline of the American middle class, the drop in life expectancy, the opioid crisis, our unsecured southern border, crushing student loan debt, the global dominance of China, the quagmire in Afghanistan, infrastructure, health care costs. We could go on. You know, the little things. You haven't heard a lot about any of that lately. The news acres have not had time to tell you about any of that because they're too busy shouting self-righteously about Michael Flynn. He lied. He lied. They, by contrast, never lie because they're good people. Or like Michael Flynn, who lied. So I guess the point is there's been a cost to our Russia fixation. Years later, we may look back and wonder what happened during the last two years. How did everybody in America with an Ivy League education simultaneously go insane in the space of a single year? Was there some kind of mass poisoning? Was it ergotism? It happened in medieval France. Maybe, maybe that's what happened. We're going to let historians sort that out. We're not really sure. For now, all we know for certain is that the people in charge have lost it. They really have. And if you don't believe it, listen to them explain the intricacies of the Russia conspiracy. They're mesmerized by it. It's a tale so complex, so riddled with internal contradictions, it sounds like an Eastern religion. Only they really understand it, but they mean it, and they do understand it. To them, Russia is the touchstone, is the comprehensive theory of everything. Consider what happened, for example, last night on cable news, and it really could have been any night on cable news. MSNBC, CNN, take your pick. We just happened to be watching last night around 11 when this happened, so we're bringing it to you tonight because it's interesting and it tells you a lot. By the way, this is from the most serious news program that NBC offers on cable. It's called The 11th Hour. There are two people in the segment we're about to show you. The first is a man called Malcolm Nance. Now, Nance identifies himself as a 35-year veteran of counterintelligence work, whatever that means. His most recent book is called The Plot to Hack America. It was a national bestseller thanks to heavy promotion from MSNBC. The second man you're about to see is Brian Williams, who, of course, needs no introduction. He was the anchor of the NBC Nightly News back when that meant something. Williams is widely regarded as a, as a good guy by people who know him, and he's absolutely, in Washington anyway, is thought of as one of the smartest people in the news business. The point is, these are not kooks on late-night radio. They are considered highly impressive people. Keep that in mind as you watch this. Williams opens a segment by explaining that Russian disinformation teams have been working to divide America and convince the population, among other totally implausible things, that Jim Comey and Robert Mueller might have political agendas. Ridiculous, right? Williams asked Malcolm Nance to comment on that proposition, and Nance says this. 
What Russia has done here and where the true brilliance of this intelligence operation comes from is way back in the early 2000s, the Russian military conducted a strategic study and started carrying out a disinformation plan in which they said that instead of carrying out kinetic warfare against your enemies, the best thing we can do is create a disinformation frame around that nation to the point where, over time, as we are constantly tearing them apart and feeding them with false information, they would actually welcome an invasion. Huh? Wait, wait a second here. This is what we in the news business call news. So for nearly 20 years, the Russians have been building a disinformation frame around the United States. What's a disinformation frame? And how does it manage to brainwash an entire population so thoroughly that they welcome a foreign invasion? I mean, that's got to be the most powerful mind control device in human history. More detail, please. This, really, this is the part of the interview where the anchor politely interrupts the guest and asks him to explain what the hell he's talking about. But Williams does not do that. He just lets Malcolm Nance keep talking. So Malcolm Nance does keep talking. So Russia has done that to the United States, and it began way before 2016. As a matter of fact, the earliest references I have uh, with relation to Donald Trump shows that it started back in 2011 with Maria Butina and the NRA contacts, contacts with the fundamentalist uh, Christian right and the alt-right in the United States. Russia was pushing these disinformation themes then. Then in 2013, they stood up the Russian Federation Internet Research Agency, which built all of these memes and tropes, which became the cruise missiles of fake news and disinformation designed to do what it did today, take one-third of the United States population and make them refuse to believe what they see before their very eyes and may have elected a president in the process. Holy smokes. This is a tsunami of news. It turns out that Donald Trump's collusion with Russia began years before any of us suspected, way back in 2011. Here's the confusing part. In 2011, by all outward appearances, Trump was still a pretty conventional New York liberal. He went on David Letterman to read the top 10 list. He endorsed gun control. It was all a cover, a sophisticated ruse. As Malcolm Nance reveals, Trump was, in fact, busy plotting with the NRA, Christian fundamentalists, and the alt-right. Now, keep in mind, this was years before there was such a thing as the alt-right. But that's just how stealthy this operation was. Even the Steele dossier missed it. So did the rest of us, so that's not surprising, since, as Malcolm Nance has explained, thanks to Russian brainwashing, one-third of the U.S. population can no longer perceive reality. That's Malcolm Nance's position. What would you do if somebody repeated those exact same words to you on a city bus? You'd likely be worried. At the very least, you'd probably switch seats. Not Brian Williams. He'd move closer. Williams didn't seem to consider Nance's explanation strange in the slightest. He was deeply impressed by it. Williams asked how the Russians could have pulled off an operation this extensive without the willing help of American accomplices. Of course, Nance, Nance had an answer to that. Keep in mind, as you watch this clip, that we have not edited the tape in any way. This aired verbatim last night on MSNBC. Watch. They have played on the, the themes of far-right conspiracy theorists from the 1960s, the John Birch Society, a, a sideline group, uh, you know, and the farthest extremes of the libertarian parties. They have amplified racism to the point where the alt-right, Steve Bannon's own creation of gamers, is now of the wholly owned subsidiary of the Trump campaign and are believers in David Duke, the Ku Klux Klan, Richard and Richard Spencer, uh, the neo-Nazi, and Robert Spencer, the Islamophobe, to the point where they're mainstreamed. This is how effective this information warfare campaign has been carried out. And let me tell you, this report shows how they went after to suppress the African-American vote. And there is no doubt in my mind or anybody else's in the intelligence community that doesn't believe that it took American citizens to assist them in really getting down to where these voters were who needed to be suppressed. 
Wow. So in case you weren't transcribing that as you watch, let's bottom line it for you. The Russia conspiracy just expanded to include a bewildering array of new figures. These would include the John Birch Society, the KKK, David Duke, people who play online video games, Steve Bannon, a religion blogger named Robert Spencer, and others. Collectively, their goal was not simply to elect Donald Trump, but to hurt African Americans. Why would Russian intelligence want to do that, you might ask? Well, if you have to ask, you're probably working for Vladimir Putin, too, so shut up. It goes without saying that all of this is completely insane. There's no evidence to support any of it. It is not true. Worse than that, it's irresponsible. Keep in mind, this aired on a division of NBC News, so some large number of people are likely going to believe it. They'll go to sleep worrying about the invisible disinformation frame that surrounds their country and the resurgence of the John Birch Society. And they'll wake up a little more convinced that anyone who disagrees with them is a tool of a foreign power. Because that is the real message here and of this whole conspiracy. There's no other side of the debate. There's only Russian propaganda. To a certain sort of fragile liberal, that's probably comforting to know. But it's a lie. In fact, it's its own form of propaganda. No news organization should traffic in garbage like this. News anchors exist to push back against nutty claims like these. Brian Williams bought them completely. Wow. Uh, Malcolm Nance, this is why we ask you all the time to come on this broadcast. Uh, scary <laughs> stuff, but it needs to be said, needs to be heard. Thank you, sir, so much for joining us once again. It needs to be said. It needs to be heard. This is why we ask you to come on this broadcast. Save that video. Future generations won't believe it.